Hey, welcome to the channel. My name is Jason and here I talk about all things story. And the story I'm talking about today is the novel, The Sweet Hereafter by Russell Banks. Yes, I know it's been some time since I've done a book review. I'm excited to get back into it. I apologize for the delay, but I've, I've gotten a lot of stuff off my plate. So hopefully they will be coming with more frequency. However, I am not a fast reader, so bear with me. So what is the hook? What is The Sweet Hereafter about? Well, it is a tragedy. It is a tale of the community of a small town called Sam Dent, where a school bus careens off into a frozen stream, killing 14 children. And I know you may say, thanks for uh, spoiling the whole thing for me. That is not a spoiler. That is the premise. That is in the description on Amazon. Don't worry, you have not been spoiled. That is not what the story is about. Well, it's what it's about, but it's, it's really about the effects of the tragedy and the experiences of four characters in particular, Dolores, Billy, Mitchell, and Nicole. So what did I think? What did I think about this novel? Well, as I said, let us begin with character. And character is very interwoven with plot here because the formatting of this book is that it is told from the perspective of four characters, solely their POV, with the exception of the first and last chapter, which are from the perspective of Dolores, the bus driver herself. We're also introduced to a man named Billy Ansel, who is a vet. He's had a tragedy of his own. He's a single father with two children who gets by owning a mechanic shop. And he, he also witnesses this event. And next we have the lawyer, a Mr. Mitchell Stevens. He comes to the town trying to litigate, maybe get these, uh, gets these people some money, uh, trying to find whose fault could this be? Is it, is it the bus drivers? Is it the state because of some reason? Finally, Nicole, a young girl who is crippled by this accident. So I'm sure as you can see, there's a, there's a, a cast of interesting characters um, that are representing different aspects of, of how someone might approach this event if they experienced it themselves or were brought into it by some other means. So I don't want to get too deep into each one of these character stories, but I want to tell you why this is such an amazing book from that standpoint. First and foremost, this is a masterwork of characterization. I can't express how much I love the character work here. Now I do write, so I, I feel like I have a different level of appreciation here. However, if you are just a reader, that doesn't matter whatsoever because you may you may be reading this wondering yourself why you're so captivated. And that is because of the way Russell Banks brought these characters to life, plunged you into their world, and just really got in their heads, got you in their heads. And this really didn't come to me. It didn't hit me hard until I got to Mitchell Stevens' story, who is the lawyer, because the first chapter is Dolores, the bus driver. The second chapter is Billy Ansel, who is the, uh, the vet I spoke about, who has the, the two children as a single dad. But it was the lawyer's tale, because I'll tell you what, I was already pulled in emotionally by what was going on. You already felt, you know, you already had two chapters to wade through, and these are longer chapters. They're almost novellas themselves. And so I was invested. Hearing about Dolores, hearing about uh, Billy Ansel, I was, I was invested in the characters and the world. And then here comes hotshot lawyer from New York City to just tear this peaceful town apart, turn people against each other. He's just here for greed, for money, power. But no. That's not what happens. Mr. Banks, the writer, he completely turned me around because I remember as the second I started reading this, th this chapter, I was like, oh, fuck this guy, this scumbag, this lawyer. I don't care about him. I don't want to hear about him. I got to wade through 50 pages or so of this guy's story. I don't care. But then I did care because I learned about his past. And I think that's one thing you can take from this whole thing is these chapters aren't only about what happens from the event forward. They're about what has happened to the character in the past, kind of what's influencing them and their decisions and their approaches, um, you know, with each other and the event in general. And the lawyer's story is no different. We learn about his past. We learn about his, his family, his, his wife and daughter in a situation. And, and really, most importantly, we learn about his motivation to do what he does. And it is not driven by money whatsoever. It's not driven by greed. And I will give it to Mr. Banks because he did something that I feel is, is, is rarely possible in film because a lot of times when you have a preconceived notion of a character in a film or anything like that, it's difficult to win the audience over. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of knowledge. It takes a lot of just craft to do so. And he expertly does it here. And all of these stories are, are interwoven. So it's not just 
um, these characters POV shots, you know, in isolation. There's overlap. There's there's interactions with other characters who we get the opportunity to see their POV of the entire thing. And the events that happen in one chapter also kind of overlap in another. And so you get this beautiful tangle of a story that just it really comes all together. And you are completely left with a heavy heart at the end of this thing. But it's satisfying. It's very satisfying. It's cathartic. I felt like it couldn't have been done any better. And I know I've kind of gone off on a tangent on, on plot and stuff because it's difficult. Normally I like to talk about plot separately, but honestly, it's it's so interconnected. This is such a character-driven story that, that it's difficult to talk about them in isolation. So hopefully that gives you enough idea about the plot and what to expect and, and just how amazing the character work is here and how I am convinced you will be pulled into this book, no matter what kind of genre you like to read. Because at its heart, it's a it's a human story. And, and as long as you're human, as long as you're human person watching this, human person, as long as you're not an alien, I think you can find something here. Even if you're in a sci-fi or fantasy or mystery or any of those things, this is a story we can all appreciate. All right, if I couldn't gush any more about this book, let's talk about the writing. The writing, the line-by-line -line work, or as I like to call it, the cinematography of the novel. And this is great. Surprise, right? I liked it. I loved it. It's it's simple to read. It's all in first person. So I think that that really lended itself to the reader getting into the head of these characters. You're, you're as close of a POV as you can possibly be. And the main challenge, I think, for any writer when doing character is speaking in their voice, right? So I know that sounds weird. I'm not talking about dialogue. I'm talking about the line by line, the narrative description, how these characters perceive the world, how they react to it. And I can tell you, uh, he, again, successfully blew me out of the water with this. Everybody felt completely distinct. The way they saw things, you just felt like you were in the head of Dolores, Mitchell, Billy, and Nicole the entire time. And again, this is not a very long novel. It just really begins to make me appreciate more and more and more uh, these the shorter works and how much you can just pack in with so few pages. So I'm not sure what else to talk about the writing other other than the fact that if you are a writer yourself, I highly encourage you to read this book, at least from a characterization standpoint, to understand when you read these craft books, to, to know what they mean by making every character sound distinct. Something I struggle with all the time. I'm sure it's something you struggle with. But if you're not a writer and you're just a reader, this is extremely easy to read. You just dip into the world. You identify with these characters. You're lost in the pages. You don't feel like you're reading words anymore, but just seeing these images. And I think that's the goal of, of any good book. So should you read it? Yes, I think you should read this book no matter what your interests are because as I said, it's telling a human story. We're all human. We all have these pains, these regrets, these hopes, and, and all of that is, is contained here in such a beautiful way. And I, I highly recommend anyone to read this book. It's, it's, a, it's a quick read. It's not like Infinite Just Behind Me where it's a, of biblical, biblical proportions. And I guarantee you, you're going to find someone or something to identify with. All right, with that out of the way, the verdict. I'm going to have to give Sweet Hereafter by Russell Banks a 9 out of 10. One of my favorite books I've read in a long time. And not just because I'm admiring it from a writer's standpoint, but as a reader. And I think that's really, for me, the key is because when I started writing more, the way you read is different. You start to analyze things. You start to look deeper. You start to pluck things and be like, I like that. I want to use that in something I'm working on. That all bled away for me. It disappeared. And that is when I know I'm reading a truly great book is when the words go away and I'm just left with the story unfolding before my eyes. So top to bottom, a great book. Highly recommended. I, I'm actually anxious to look more into his bibliography, see what his other works are because he is a hell of a writer. There's also a movie, came out in 1997. I haven't seen it yet. I'm debating on it because I feel like this book is just so great that the movie's probably gonna feel like the Cliff's Notes version. But anyway, if you would like to see me create and not just critique, please check out my series, Worth 1,000 Words, where I write a 1,000 word short story based on a piece of artwork without an outline. And if you'd like to support the channel, if you'd like this review, give me a like. Subscribe if you like story-related content. Check out my books in the description below. And thanks for hanging out with me, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.